Hello everyone, I'm Steve Venner, G0TAN. Today I'm going to show you ICOM's new compact radio, the HF radio, the IC7300. Okay. Um, some of you may know that I actually have one of these, um, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about why I particularly chose this model. Um, I was looking for something along the lines of uh, an SDR style of radio, one with a you know, waterfall, uh, spectrum panel, uh, graph, that sort of thing. I didn't want to use the Flex. I mean, Flex are a great radio, but I didn't want to carry a big PC around or a PC around with me at the same time. Whereas the ICOM it has that lovely uh, display on there, and it's all in one lovely compact um, box, for want of a better word. Um, the other thing that I like about ICOM radios is that I find that they're user interface, uh, the menu system, is very intuitive. Um, it's the important stuff is easily accessible, the stuff that you don't need very often is going to be down, delved down in some of the menus, but having said that it's still so easy to use um, and that's, that's one reason why I like, like ICOM radios in general. And as I said, this is a compact radio, um, I don't have a very big shack at home so I can't justify fitting in um, something like the 7800, something like that. So that's the reason. Uh, what I'm going to show you is basically some of the features and functions that are available on the radio. Uh, we're going to start off with the front panel, the back panel, and then I'll go into a little bit more in depth about what some of the buttons do, and certainly that lovely uh, touch screen. The, the radio itself is around about 240 millimeters wide, um, 240 millimeters deep and about 95 millimeters high. Now um, that's without the bail stand. Uh, what we've got on here, um, if you put the bail stand down it raises it up about another 25 millimeters. But to make your life a little easier, uh, the Nifty group uh, have come up with this lovely little stand that you can see underneath here. And that raises it up just a little bit more, about another inch, and makes it just that bit easier to use. So. Uh, so what we're going to do now, so I'm just going to go over some of the front um, buttons and knobs and all sorts of things like that, um, just to show you what they do. Okay, so let's do that. Right, okay, so look, let's start. Um, we start off top left, we have the power button here. So let's switch it off, so that's what it's like. What I'm going to do, and I recommend you do this when you, if, you get, if you get one of these radios, in fact any radio that you get, whether it's Icom, Kenwood, Yesu or, or whoever, when a radio comes from the factory, it's got certain settings. Um, they may or may not have uh, reset the radio. So it's always a good idea to go right from the uh, factory default setting. And on here, it's very easy to do. I'm just going to press the menu button. I'll show you how to do all this a little bit later on. But you can go to set. Uh, you should see down here, others. Uh, there's a reset button. All reset. Uh, do next, and then yes. Right, so it says all reset. So this will start right from the very beginning. And as you can see there, it always comes up on 14.1 megahertz, uh, USB mode, and it's very simple. You don't, at this moment in time, actually have a frequency display. We can go um, talk about that in a little while. So what we're going to do is, uh, say so that was a power button. Uh, transmit button is will actually put out a carrier or put the radio into transmit. So if you don't have a PTT switch, uh, on your microphone, whichever mic you might be ha having, you can switch it into transmit mode by just by pressing, pressing that. Um, you've got the tuner button to activate the internal tuner. You have the Vox stroke break-in button for, again, if you're using a voice operated microphone or if you're using the, the Kia, Morse, Morse key. Below that you have the 3.5mm stereo headphone jack and then we have the normal ICOM 8-pin round microphone adapter. Next we have the twin passband tuning. If I give that a little tweak there, you can see the settings momentarily appear on the display. So you've got the upper and lower frequencies, as you can see there. Hopefully if I get that set back right. Uh, almost. OK, we'll worry about that later. Um, then you have the uh, preamp setting. It's set to preamp 1. If you press and hold it, it goes to the attenuator. So press it again, and if you a light press will take you to preamp two. One more press takes the preamps off altogether. Okay. Then you have the notch filter. The notch again, it comes up with 
AN to begin with, which is the automatic notch. Um, if you press it again, you can have the manual notch it's set to, currently set to wide. You turn it off. If you press and hold it, you can see the um, options that you are available to you for the manual notch come up on the display. I'll talk a bit, a little bit more about that as we go through the rest of the buttons in more detail. But just to summarise, oh, well, not summarise, but just to go through these quickly, you have the noise blanker. You have the um, noise reduction, which I'll uh, show you how that works a little bit later. Uh, volume control. Okay, and then below that you have the normal ICOM, uh, both the RF gain and squelch control. So you can see how that works, and you can turn the RF gain up and down as you wish. So we leave it there. Now below this we have the ST SD card socket. Um, the SD cards. The, t the standard size SD card is up to 2 gigs. If you put the high density SD card in, you can get up to about a 32 gig card in there. Okay. So moving on, we have the nice 4.3 inch uh, color touchscreen display. Okay. Um, along the bottom we have various function, uh, physical function buttons. There's a lot of buttons that might appear on the display depending on what mode you're in, um, but we'll talk about those later. Okay, so then what we have is the multi-function knob. As I say, at the moment we've got it still in the notch position, and you can adjust that to manually adjust your notch. Uh, notch, notch. That's better. Uh, we get rid of that. Depending on what mode you're in, uh, at the moment we're in USB. Um, so we can control things like the RF power, mic gain, compression, and monitor. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Um, below that, you've got your transmit frequency. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? To, to monitor, so if you're working split mode, you can actually monitor your transmit frequency. We'll see, we'll see what's uh, actually going on there. A uh, little TXRX indicator. You've got this auto-tune button. This is something um, that I discovered actually last night, would you believe? I, I didn't know what it did. I, I've not actually read the manual for this yet. Uh, I find ICOM radio is very easy to use, so there's no need for doing that. Um, so what we're going to be doing is probably a little bit of a, a tour of dis discovery, voyage of discovery, if you like. Okay, so, so we might find some new things out that I didn't know existed. Um, at the bottom we have a speech button, um, which actually spe speaks the uh, frequency and mode for you. And if you press and hold it, you've got the lock. And then we have the last few controls over here. Receiver, incremental tuning, uh, transmit incremental tu tuning. And if you set one of those up, um, you can change it. If you want to clear it, you just press and hold the clear button. Uh, then you have the split button, if you're working split frequency. The two VFOs, A and B, uh, you can change between those. Um, VFO and memory button. Then you have the memory up and down arrow keys. Memo pad and the main tuning VFO. And then just below the main tuning VFO, you actually have a little uh, restrictor, so you can either have it very stiff, or you can have actually have it free running. So that's that's basically the the front panel controls. Now what I'm going to do is just turn the radio around and have a look at a few of the uh, items that are on the back panel. Here we go. Just going around. I'm going to take the bail arm, uh, the, the uh, lower the bail arm, and take out a little nifty stand here. So let's see what goes on. This might give you. Hopefully that's in uh, the right shot. So on the back, back panel, if you can see that, we have the normal four pin power connector, uh, an earthing lug, the, a single SO239 antenna port, a uh, nice cooling fan. You have over here, this is for if you're going to be using an external uh, tuner. Then we have two phono connectors here. This is what you would use if you are going to be using a linear amplifier. So you have one is the ALC, input and the other one is the either the PTT output to switch the linear into transmit or if you have a, an external foot switch you can put it on there and actually put the radio into transmit itself. The other connector is the, um, if I can read that, that's the remote connector. Yes it, is. yes, it says remote on there. Let me get my glasses for a second. Let me just do that. Oh, sorry, I, I tell a lie. <coughs> that's actually the key. Okay, so the Morse key goes in there. Standard ICOM 13-pin accessory socket. 
Next to that you have a USB B-type connector, followed by the remote socket, so if you're using um, the, the ICOM CIV protocol, that's where you'd connect that. And then finally, the external speaker. Okay, and that's where that goes. So that's all that's on the back panel. Let's turn that around. Put it back as it was. Drag the antenna back in. Screw them up. Nice and tight. Got a bail arm there. Put him in. Aha. Wiggly wobbly. That's broken it. Get them all lined up. So <coughs> hopefully if I put the power cable back in, if it reaches. There we go. And on she comes. So good. Right. So what we're going to do now is the... Um, I mentioned some uh, dimensions earlier on about sort of being about 240 by 240 by about 95 without the bail arm. Um, the weight is around about uh, 4.2 kilos, something like that. And what it actually covers frequency-wise, which I didn't mention before, was that it covers all of the HF bands, which actually includes 5 megahertz as standard as we get it from, from ICOM. Now, it, the 5 meg band has been expanded recently. Um, and this, as it comes, will not do the, the higher or the top 1.6 or 1.5 kilohertz. If you're really interested in going all the way up to the top of the 5 meg band, then you need to have the wideband mods done. Okay. Um, or you can wait until a firmware update comes, and I'm sure at some point in time they will e extend it in that. So, but don't quote me on it, okay? just, just in case I get things wrong. Um, the other band that this does cover, uh, besides six meters, it goes four meters too. Now four meters, it goes all the way from 70 megs all the way up to 70.5 megahertz. But you'll only get about 50 watts on, on that band. Okay, all the rest are 100 watts. Okay, so I mentioned the stand, I've done all that. Um, now what I'm gonna do is go into a little bit more in depth of some of these controls. Um, what we can see, I'm going to put my glasses on for this because uh, I'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, so what we have as a standard display, we have a little TX, uh, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this, there's a little red TX indicator on there, which if we're in band, it will actually illuminate when we transmit. If you actually go out of band, say, there we go, you'll see that now the outer ring has gone dotted, and it's saying, I can't transmit here. If you try and transmit, it won't do anything. Okay, so there we go. So turn that background to 14, 14.01, 14 whatever it is. Okay, so the main, the main idea behind this is, say, the, uh, the touchscreen display. The problem, the one issue, not a problem, one issue with smaller compact radios, they don't have enough um, physical space on the front panel to get all the buttons in. Uh, you can't get all the mode buttons in, you can't get all the band buttons in, things like that, otherwise the radio will sort of start growing and growing. Um, so that's why they put this um, touch screen on, so it's easy access. There are some other radios out there that if you want to change modes, you have to cycle through the mode. There's a mode button on there and you have to keep pressing it to go around it. And the same with the band buttons, you have to get cycle up and down through the bands. Well, the way this, this does it, um, say with the, uh, the touch screen, if you just touch the, the mode button, it gives you all the options, you know, sideband, CW, RITI, AM, FM, and data, data modes. And when you select whichever one you want, ah, there you go, CW, we're now in CW mode. So we go back to sideband, back to sideband, brilliant. Um, if you want to change frequency, it's common, you just touch the main megahertz part, and then it gives you all of the um, but the, the, the main ham bands that you, that you have that, that are available. Now, it doesn't show you on there uh, the, um, either the 5 megs or the 70 megs because they're not globally um, utilised bands. So if you want to use those bands, what you have to do is use the frequency input button and then just type in 5, enter, and now you're going to fight 5 megs. Uh, at the moment we're dotted, so you actually have to tune into the appropriate part of the band, and then you'll see the, the TX light illuminate. Okay, so let's go back to, um, let's try try 70 megs. So again, frequency input, 70, enter, 
70 megs. Okay. You can store these in memory if you want to, um, so for later recall. Um, but now we're, we're good for TX, so we know that's okay. If you go outside, it's gone. There you go. Right. Super. Now let's go back to a normal band. Okay, what else have we got on here? Well, we've got the filtering. Receive, fi receive filtering. Okay, if you touch the filter button, let's try it from this side. We go there. So at the moment, um, it comes up briefly, and you can see the bandwidth is 3 kilohertz for filter 1. It's 2.2 kilohertz for filter 2. Filter 3 is 1.8 kilohertz. Now, if you want to change those, you just press and hold it and then you get all of the filtering menu just pop up like that, it's brilliant. Okay, so you can change if you want to. You can see here I can change the actual upper bandwidth, the lower bandwidth. Um, you've got a couple of little slidey bars at the bottom here. When they go green, hopefully, there it goes. I don't really be able to see that in the video, but uh, when you go to green, there it is. Um, they're, they're the default settings. You can also press the default button as well to take you back. Um, so there's the bandwidth. Again, you can uh, change the bandwidth by adjusting the main uh, VFO knob. Okay. So again, touch the default, it takes us back. Now the other thing that you've got on here as far as the filtering is concerned is whether you have it soft or sharp. Um, you can go sharp or soft. It just makes a slightly different, depending on your, how your ears are, how you want it set up. So there's quite a lot of configurable options, but very easy to do. Okay. Once you finish with the filtering, just press the exit button and away you go back to the normal screen. Um, and that you can configure for each of the filter types, filter 1, filter 2, filter 3. Okay. So, what else have we got up here? Well, there's a little um, indicator along the top. I doubt very much if you'll really be able to see that. It's a little SD card indicator to let you know that you've got an SD card in there. And then we have a clock. The clock you can set either to local time or to UTC. Um, we, we go through that a little bit later on, um, how to set it up. At the moment they're both set to the same. So again, you can hit return and it takes you back. We also have on here, we're currently set to VFOA. If I press the VFOB button, you see it changes. Right, and that's what's used for when you're doing split frequency operation as well. Um, what else have we got on here? We've got a power meter. Now, this is a standard display that you get when you power it on. You think, yeah, it's not much. There's a big wasted space down here. So, um, before we fill that out with some goody stuff, what we can do is, if you're not happy with a power meter, you can just touch it. And now we've got the SWR meter. We touch it again, we've got the ALC, we've got the compression settings, we've got the drain voltage, we've got the drain current, and then back round to the power again. You can set it to what you want. One way of doing that so you get all three is if you go into the menu and you go meter, now you've got them all there, all nicely set up for you. So you've got the power output, ALT, compression, SWR, ID, VD, and also temperature. Okay, so that's, that's what you've got from there. And you can exit from that, takes you back to the standard menu. The other thing that we have on the display is the RIT, which we have up here. And again, if you change that using the multi-function knob, that will work. Uh, adjust that as necessary. So, but as I said at the beginning, one of the reasons that I bought this radio is because I wanted something with a uh, spectrum display. And to get that on, you basically press the menu button. You can do a quick menu. Oops, sorry, no, not that. Um, M-scope, there we go. Um, but again, you've got a lower frequency readout and a very small uh, spectrum display. So, to make it bigger, what I'd recommend is press that and press scope, but now you've got a slightly bigger frequency display. You have the small one, but if you press the soft button on the screen, now you've got the nice big waterfall display and the frequency spectrum. Okay, so let's carry on with that. You've got a whole bunch of information on here. It might be a little bit overwhelming, but uh, just just play with it. You, you'll get used to it. It's actually quite quite straightforward, quite uh, quite. Um, oh, we've got some data modes going on there by the look of things. Okay, there are two modes um, for the spectrum display. You have basically the center mode, which is where in the center of the screen, vertical where that vertical bar is. That is the frequency readout that you're going to be tuning to. And as you can see, as I tune, 
the whole of the frequency shifts backwards and forwards. Okay. So that's that's that one. Um, with that, you can change the span. We're currently at plus or minus 20 kilohertz. We can do that plus or minus 40 kilohertz, plus or minus 80. You can, I think you can go all the way up to. Uh, oh, no, no. it goes up to all the way up to plus or minus 400 kilohertz, which is quite a quite a spectrum. It's quite a sweet. Um, I don't like it too wide because things get to get start getting a little bit too too difficult to see. So. You can also hold it and then you, you'll have a, a green cursor that will actually move along to where, you, uh, where your frequency is. Okay. So take it off hold. You have another option. Uh, you've got a reference frequency which is the amount of noise. We're currently set at 0 dB. You can change that so the noise gets bigger, higher, uh, the grass gets higher, the screen becomes brighter. Or you can take it down to, I usually run it about minus two and a half, something like that. It's quite nice. You get a nice deeper blue background and then the signal strike quite strong. A nice CW signal there that we all play about with in a minute. So we can exit from that. Um, you can change the speed of the waterfall. You can have it going quite fast as it is at the moment, which is what I like. Uh, yeah, we've still got some noise going on there. Um, you can change it to, to mid, which is a little bit slower. Or you would have it slow. And then the markers, you have two markers on here. One will only come up when you're in what we call um, fixed mode. Uh, the other one is the T marker, which is your transmit frequency when you're in split mode. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. So let's go back to speed as fast and turn the marker off so we don't do that. And I've already print, uh, pressed that. Now, on this soft button here, We've got the expand or EXPD, which takes it to a little one or a big one. But if you press and hold it, all these sort of things, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you might want to set up. You can change the colours, uh, the type of display. When you zoom in to a particular frequency, um, by default, your frequency marker is in the centre of the uh, audio passband. Um, you'll see a lot of um, like SDRs or even web SDR where the, sen the actual readout frequency is to the left. So basically your, your absolute frequency is there or there, you can see it. And if you're an upper side band, you'll see all the mush and the noise and the audio on one side of it. So, so you, you can set all this stuff up on here. You can set the waveform colors. Um, there's all sorts of stuff that uh, will display the speed again. Um, let me just go back one here. Now I said about, at the moment we're actually in centre mode. If I go back to that one and say put it into fixed mode, you've now got, it goes from, on 20 metres, it goes from all the way from 14 megs all the way to 14.35. And then what you do is it's like an old style radio where you have the old uh, cursor moving backwards and forwards. So you can actually see, that takes up the whole of the spectrum. Um, we've got something going on there, I believe. We'll listen to that in a minute. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, well, that's fine, but you know, you might have some audio stuff, uh, some stations working up here. You might want to zoom in a little bit. Well, you can press the soft button that says Edge, okay, and then you can get it, say, maybe just in the CW part of the band. If you press Edge again, you might get just in the SSB part of the band. Now, those band edges you can actually change. Okay, so if I again go back here and scroll down, you'll see fixed edges. So if you want to say we're in 14 megs, we go to the 11 to 15 megs, and you can see there they're currently set to 14 point to 14.35, 14 to 14.1, and then 14.1 to 14.35. You can change all those. So if you wanted to say on the CW part of the band, you touch that, we say 14. Enter um, and then 14.05. Uh, okay, enter. So now we've got a small part of the band and it'll actually zoom in on that. So it's very, very configurable. Uh, it's, it's a load of fun playing with it. I say it's a, it's a voyage of discovery every time I use this. So let's get out of that. So, what else have we got here? <coughs> we've done the filters, we've done the time, 
Um, again, you've got the smaller S, uh, signal strength meter. Again, you can just touch it to get whatever you want. Very good. Uh, compression, VDD, let's go back to power output. Okay, so now, as you saw earlier, uh, we're actually now in fixed mode, as it says there. You'll see the receive marker is on all the time, and that is uh, wherever we are. We've got little green arrows over there. Um, so here we go, here we come. So we just so that's now. So we've got that's that's the receive marker, and if we go into split mode, uh, and we put the marker on, that's it. So the marker's off the other side. So if I press and hold split, they're both together. Uh, right, A equals B. That's even better. Now we've got it. So we've got the receiver going one, and then the transmit. We can tune up the band to a different one. So now we can see the differences in, in split. Okay. So that's that's basically the main display. And the other things that are displayed there um, are dependent on what these buttons are. So, <coughs> excuse me. So let's go. I'm just going to come out of this mode. Uh, come out of memory scope. There we go. So we go back to a, a standard display, and if we want to use Vox, we get the Vox icon coming here. Um, that will only happen when you're in SSB mode. If I was to change to, say, CW, and press the break in, uh, sorry, press the Vox break in, you get break in here. Press it again, it becomes full full break in. Okay. So simple. Then t turn it off. Let's go back to sideband, so you can hear something. Um, Again, the tuner button, if you press the tuner, you'll get an icon up here to say the tuner's enabled. Um, if I press and hold it, I get it right, we start it off. <laughs> but if the tune icon, icon stays on, it means that the internal tuner has successfully matched the, uh, your antenna. So that's good. If it goes off, um, no, it's, it hasn't found a match. Now, there is a little feature with the ICOM radio, uh, the 7300, that uh, I'll tell you about in a little while, which will maybe get around that to a degree. So there's, a, there's, a, there's a little caveat, which I'll explain. OK, so um, that was the tuner button, done the Vox break-in. Um, what else have we got on here? Let's say take the tuner off for a second, because uh, it's quite a good antenna. Uh, preamp, preamp 1, preamp 2, no preamps. Um, and if you press and hold it, you get the attenuator. They're all fixed sizes. The notch I've already mentioned. Noise blanker. We've got that one there. We've got manual notch on it. I'll turn that off for a second. Noise blanker. Now I like the noise blanker on this. It's actually quite good. Um, uh, sorry, not noise blanker. Noise reduction. Noise blanker is for pulse noises. So if you've got ignition type interference, um, that will take that out for you. But again, with all of these, if you press and hold the buttons, you'll see it produces a menu for you that you can adjust. The level on this on this one set to 50% by default. Um, you can change the depth, you just touch that, uh, set by 8. And the width, again, so 50% is about right. There you go, all done. Um, once you've set that up, ah, forget about it. The noise reduction. Uh, I don't know if you heard that. Let's take the noise blanker off. Um, Let's see if we can hear that. If I turn the noise reduction off, it's, it's on at the moment, you can see the noise comes straight up. And again, if you press and hold that, you can set the level with the multi-channel, multi-control. You can turn it right up. Now, me personally, I don't like too much of noise reduction. The problem is, it doesn't matter what rig it is, I find you put too much noise reduction on, it starts ringing. You get this as an artifact, and it's, it makes my ears hurt, especially... Um, contesting situations where I'm listening with a pair of headphones. It's not For me, it's not good. Okay, so I tend to leave this at the default setting at 4. So let's go <coughs> go back to that. So there's a standard display. Turn the noise reduction off. Oh, that's loud. Okay, so what do we have over here then? Um, the AF is a volume control, as you've just heard. I've already played about with the squelch and the RF gain. If you turn the RF gain down too much, um, it's a little indicator comes on the display to say that you've got RF gain turned down. Okay, brilliant. What else have we got? I'm going to go across, across these buttons later on. Don't worry about them for now. Multi-channel, you've seen um, the way that that works. Now, again, if you are in sideband, you press it, you get the RF power, which is what you want. You get the mic gain, which is what you want. You get compression and the monitor, both of which you want. Now, 
If you go into, say, CW mode, oh, there we go, CW, nice narrow filters, and press that now, you've still got the 100% power, but now you've got, the second one down is the key speed and the pitch. Okay, so what functions are available on the multi-channel knob are dependent on which mode you're in. Okay, so let's uh, get rid of that, go back to sideband again. Still got split mode in at the moment. Right, we've nearly, nearly done with the front panel connections, uh, uh, buttons and things. I've already mentioned about the RIT, which is on here at the moment. Again, I can change it one way or another. Okay, uh, delta TX is your tra transmit uh, offset. We can clear both of those, I'll turn them both off. Uh, split button, which we'll do. So if we were saying, let, let's see if we want to work split. We're in a contest and we've got someone, say, uh, 148, sorry, 114.150. Start again. If you want to sort of work split, you press the split button, orange split comes on. The frequency that you trans will be transmitting on is displayed just here. So we're currently at 14.23, which is actually quite, quite a large split. So if you want to change that down, press the XFC button. Okay. And it says that I'm now currently 73.89 kilohertz away. You don't want to be that. Go back down to uh, 10 kilohertz. Okay. We go. Oh, we've got a few stations coming on. That's good. Might be able to show something. Right. So there we go. So that's now 10 kilohertz away. So if you want to listen to your TX frequency while working split, just press that and you can see what's going on. The other two buttons over here are the memory up and down buttons. I'm not going to bother to go too much details of that. The memory uh, systems on most radios are... They're, they're, there's all sorts of memories. Uh, you can have quick bank memories, um, priority memories and things like that. It's just a little bit too much of a... too much to go into in a, a simple video like this. So what I will uh, say is this... Um, the auto-tune button. So what I'm going to do is go into CW mode, because it does at the moment it doesn't do anything, it just beeps at you. Okay, it doesn't do anything. But if you go into CW mode, there we go, and we find a nice CW. There's one, let's try and find a stronger one if I can. No, it's very fast. Let me see if I can find this. Would you believe it? There's none on. Oh, there we go. That's a bit slow. Right, so if you're not sure where to tune to, press that oh, when he comes back on. Oh, there we go, he's gone now. Let's try. Oh, okay. There we go, good. Right, so if I press that, it does auto tuning. And it'll actually tune to where you're supposed to transmit. So when you do do your Morse code back, bit back to him, you're right on his frequency. A very useful little feature. So and the other thing we have, if I tune off him, is the speech button. You probably not hear that. It's quite low. But. So, there you go, CW. Right, okay, so now I know what I'm transmitting on. So, and what mode, and what band and things. So. Anyway, and if you press and hold that button, uh, it actually does the dial lock. You can actually configure it in the menu system such that um, you can lock the whole keypad if you want. Okay. So, press and hold that, dial lock is off. Now we can start tuning around again, should we want to. Uh, let's go centre mode. See what we can hear. Okay. There's some stuff around. There we go. Marker. Turn the markers off. So, that's it. So we've done, that's pretty much everything on the front panel now. Um, there's only a few little bits left to, to talk about. And they, these be the five physical buttons underneath. And a lot of these things, the menu system is a multi-layered thing. And again, as I said at the beginning, the more rare, the more... Going to say it, the, the things that you want to adjust least are buried a little bit more lower in the menu system. The things that you want to adjust maybe on a minute to minute 
um, they're on a different button. But so you, you can go to, so let, let's say you want to do the function. You get basically 10 options there. Uh, you get preamp, on and off, AGC, notch, noise blanker, noise reduction, IP. Uh, because we're in CW mode, we've got the option of turning the brake in on and off, although you can do it from the button over here. And there's all sorts of other things that you can set up relating to CW. Okay. Now, if we were go back to SSB mode, let's go back to SSB mode, and we go back into that same thing, we've now got Vox, we've got compression, and we've got monitor and your transmit bandwidth. So these are the, the sorts of different things. There's a dynamic memory uh, menu system, for want of a better word, depending on what mode you're in. So let's go, then let's start at the beginning. Um, let's do the menu system. Okay. Now, we have one up here. The first one is the scope. That's what we've been showing you most of the time. The main scope in the expanded mode, not the little bit mode. Um, so that's, that's all you get on that button. So one other option you have is to change to audio. So you can actually look at the audio spectrum and in real time if I change the level you can actually see it. Let's see if I can hear anything from there. Yep. So the AGC coming up there. Now, there were some stations there earlier on. They, the band seems to have died again on us. That's a shame. Um, you can set the level. Again, you can hold it so it doesn't uh, do anything. Uh, you can play about with the attenuator if you want to. It tells you that the attenuator's come on. Um, and then you can get the time here that's very, very fast or sort of slow it down, slow it down. Once more, nice and slow. So that's quite fun. Having a nice little oscilloscope on, on the display. So, what other things? Right, so the voice. <coughs> because we're in SSB mode. Okay, touch that. You can, it's got a voice recorder built into it. You've got up to eight channels to record your voice. Um, if I had a microphone, I could sort of demonstrate that to you, but it's basically you can record or set. Um, if you set, you can say auto monitor on and the repeat time. So if you record a message, so if you're in a contest environment, for instance, you can say, hello CQ, hello CQ, this is Golf Zero, Tango Alpha November calling CQ, blah, blah, blah. You do that and you can save it and then you can repeat it every so often until you hear someone come back to you. So there's all sorts of fun things that you can do there. There's a TX level, which we spoke about, so you can set the audio level of your TX. Uh, audio. Okay, and there are the various messages. So if I'd set one up, we would have been sending that out now. So T2, T3. Okay, so exit out of that. Uh, let's do it. Um, the meter I've already mentioned to you, you get the full scale of meter on there. Now this, this, this next little thing is an SWR. My ICOM 7000 has the same feature, and I, I really like it. It's, this has a, an inbuilt SWR pl uh, plotter, if you like. So on, say on 20 meters where we're at the moment, we can set the step size and the bar graph size. We can set it up to say 30. Uh, let's do 13 bar graphs all the way along there. If you set it going, it'll actually measure the SWR of the antenna and it'll do it every time you key up. So you can actually see our antenna is fairly well tuned here. Okay, you can see that going along. In fact, it's pretty good all the way along. And I don't have the tuner in at the moment, so a bit more. That's it. So we, we're finished now. Now, if I was to, we're back at 14.251, uh, if I set the tuner going, right, the tune's on. If I run that again, and now uh, transmit, uh, so it hasn't tuned it. And the reason being, it already thinks that it's in pretty good, uh, pretty good match, so it doesn't need to tune. Okay. Brilliant. Excellent. Right. So that, that's a really useful facility. I say it's a quite uh, common feature on most, most, most iPhone radios. So you see where you know where you've got to uh, tune your antenna. Uh, what else have we got there? SWR memory. I'm not going to go too much into memories, but if you want to, you can say that's how you recall it. Uh, to to memorise it, you actually have to press a couple of other buttons, but it's uh, fairly straightforward. I won't do that now. So let's see what else we've got. Uh, again, with the scan buttons, the scanning facilities on this are very. Um, say, there's a lot, a lot to it. Should we say, um, programming it, the delta frequency, you got fine, the span and the set. It's uh, it's quite involved, but uh, very useful if you're into scanning type of stuff. 
uh, memo pad that you can set up to, I think it's about five, uh, yes, you can set, it's, here there's three, there's actually five in total that you can set up, and you can get to the memo pad quite easy from the memo pad button. So what else have we got? Uh, that's your voice recorder, so you can actually record your transmitted audio, you can record your received audio, and all the recordings are actually set to the, uh, or stored to the SD card here, so, which is pretty good, and you can record them and play them back later. Uh, what else have we got? Ah, right, the set, <laughs> this is probably the one that you're least likely to set up, or you, sorry, least likely to use, apart from maybe the very first time. So you have so many things in here that you can set up. There's tone control for both receive and transmit. Uh, you have the function buttons. Now functions, you've got the beep levels, beep limits, beeps, band edge beeps. There's a whole myriad of stuff. Ritty shift widths, tuner, whether it's internal or external. Um, you have the lock function, whether it's just the main dial or whether you have the panel as well. Uh, so a whole bunch of fun stuff that you can configure. Okay. So, um, the connectors. Now this is one that you might want to uh, play about with, certainly if you're into doing digital modes and things like that. The USB output on the back, you can set it to do all sorts of stuff. At the moment we've got the output select to be audio. If I touch that, you can also do, use the IF. Now you, in theory, you can use something like uh, SDR Sharp. Um, plug that into your computer set SDR sharp up and running and you can get a up to about 9 kilohertz bandwidth or um, frequency RF fre frequency spectrum okay, so all sorts of fun things like that very very configurable so what else have we got on there data modes uh, oh, CIV ports serial functions there's a whole bunch of stuff in there really really useful stuff um, the display itself you can change the backlighting the display type the font See, this is all the sort of stuff that you'd very rarely need to use. So don't be frightened of going in there and playing about with it. Um, you know, if you, if you sort of get somewhere, you get stuck, um, that's where we're going to send our type, uh, our, set our time, our clock, the SD card, uh, whether you want to format it, save your settings, load settings, things like that. You can even capture the screen if you want to. Um, and then we've got the other button. The other button is the information. So we've got the software version. We're currently at the latest 1.13 for the main. Um, we can go back a couple. Uh, touch screen calibration, don't need to do that. The one that you might get uh, involved with is the reset. If you've got the radio set into a particular strange mode, you don't know where you've gone, first thing to do, just do a, just do a reset. Okay, and then um, we do that there, we do all reset. Next, just go, it just wants to confirm that you're going to be doing uh, that and away we go. We go right back to the very beginning again. So 14.1 megs SSB. Okay, let's get the uh, display up and running because we like that. Go into menu, set, and we come down here and we set others. I mentioned earlier on that the internal tuner only uh, works up to about 3 to 1 SWR. Or at least I think I did. If I didn't, I should have done. Um, there is an emergency mode for the tuner. Right. So it basically expands the matching ratio. They don't say, ICOM don't say what it will actually match to. So if you've got an antenna which has, say, maybe a 5 to 1 SWR, um, you can put it into this mode and it will um, match that antenna for you. Um, but on the caveat that it reduces the power to about 50 watts, no more than that. And they don't recommend you use it for long periods of time what we don't want you to do is blow up the nice PA transistors and things like that. So if you have to use it, do it. Otherwise, I, I found the ATU matches up to, probably up to about sort of three and a half, four to one uh, on some bands. So anyway. I'm going to cancel that because I have to reset the radio again. So what else have we got on here? Well, that's basically it for that. I've done the function button. Um, there is one other on here. We've already done the mem... mem uh, quick memory scope, memory scope, menu scope. Um, the quick button here is the other type. It's a quick menu, they call it. And at the moment, um, maybe I can come out and do some other additions on here. You can do the meter type, and whether you have it power output SWR ALC, um, or the other, fun the other 
options. The other option on the quick menu is the record start. So now we're recording. If we had a microphone on here, it's actually recording both the received and transmitted audio. But as we don't have a microphone, it's only doing the receive. So um, I think if I touch that, I want to stop the recording. Yes, I've done. And that's recorded now to the SD card. So with that, um, I think I've pretty much covered everything that I was going to do in this video. Um, I hope you enjoy it, uh, or have enjoyed it, if in the past tense. Um, if there's something that you want me to explain, I will try my very best to help you out. Give, give us a call um, at the store, 0345 2300599. Just ask for Steve in the workshop. And if I can't answer it there and then, what I'll do is I will go away at home and play with it and see if I can come back to you the following day. But I really appreciate the, uh, the time that you've uh, spent watching the video. Hopefully you haven't found it too boring. Um, I haven't found this thing boring yet, because as I say, every time I play with it, I find something, some new feature I haven't discovered before. But for now, that's all you're going to get, I'm afraid. Again, thanks very much for watching, and uh, see you at the next video. Thank you very much.